In recent years, video tutorials have become a prevalent medium for delivering software learning content. Video tutorials allow users to directly observe how to complete tasks and workflows. Several recent research projects have pre-captured usage metadata in order to enhance the video tutorial viewing experience by marking up the video timeline. Unfortunately, the immense collection of existing online videos will not possess such metadata. In this work, we explore the possibilities and opportunities related to reverse engineering usage information from screen-captured application video tutorials. We developed Waken, a multi-phase processing system that recognizes UI components and activities, such as cursor movements and icon clicks, from an input set of video tutorials, without any prior application-dependent knowledge of specific interface layouts or item appearances. Waken does this by taking advantage of widget behaviors that are common across graphical user interfaces. The computer vision technique of frame differencing is used to identify occurrences of such behaviors or motions and then extract the associated widgets. Phase 1 makes a pass to identify possible cursors from the motions in the video. In order to remain application independent, we make no assumptions about the cursor appearance but instead extract the cursor appearance from motion patterns in the video. To identify cursor candidates, Waken searches for three consecutive frames where only the cursor moves, which creates an easily recognizable pattern in the resulting two frame differences. If all of the contours match in these frame differences, then it is considered a candidate cursor. We combine all the candidate cursors whose contours match to build a probabilistic model of the cursor based on the mean values and variances of the RGB channels for each pixel in the cursor area. In this visualization, the red areas indicate higher variance, resulting from the alpha levels within the source cursor. In phase two, the probabilistic models are used to search for cursors in every frame for which a cursor has not already been found. In phase three, candidate icons are identified. Candidate icons are identified from instances when they are clicked in the video. We look for a visual pattern that is common across typical user interfaces, where the cursor enters the icon region causing the region to highlight, briefly pauses, clicks the icon causing the icon region to switch to a depressed state, and exits the icon. As with cursor extraction, this pattern can be identified by looking at series of consecutive frame differences. Each time we extract an icon, we check if it matches the appearance of previously detected icons. If it matches with a previous icon, they are grouped together, and the final icon templates are generated by averaging the pixel values of all the icons in a group. Otherwise, a new icon is added. In phase four, we use template matching to find instances of the icons extracted from phase three, and when they are clicked by the cursor. Here we see consecutive frame differences coordinated side by side with the source video. Here is a section of the video when only the cursor is moving, which is used in phase one to identify the cursor. As debugging output, a rectangle indicates the track cursor location. Now we see a set of icons being clicked, which generates the pattern recognized in phase 3. The icons which have been successfully recognized are highlighted by rectangles. In order to demonstrate some of the design opportunities that our video analysis system enables, we developed an enhanced video player. The components of the player include a region where the video is played, event-based timelines, a navigation panel, and a toggle button for cursor highlighting. Cursor highlighting is an effect in many screen captured videos, but by leveraging the cursor location data generated by our system, we can allow users to dynamically enable or disable cursor highlighting. Similar to previous systems, we mark up the timeline with the icons the tutorial author clicked on. Users can click on the icons to navigate to the associated time in the video. We also visualize the cursor representation in the timeline to show the user when cursor changes occur. This may help users locate areas of the video where a mode change or a specific type of action occurred that did not result from an icon click. Users can interact with the individual icons that are recognized in any frame of the video. When a user pauses the video, bounding box overlays are rendered on top of the video indicating any recognized component. Users can then click directly on an icon to search for other moments in the video when that icon is used. When the user clicks on an icon, a panel on the right shows thumbnails representing all the times in the current video and other related videos when that icon was used. Clicking on a related video opens that video and seeks to the frame when the tool is being used. 
In our player, we also support direct UI exploration. We can show tooltips and menu items within the video canvas, even if the video itself contains none of these elements. These interactions are all enabled without any prior knowledge of the user interface design or icon appearances. As such, the system can work on a variety of software applications. Thank you for watching.